All right, everybody, welcome back. Have you ever wished you had four red arc item missiles at a stupidly low BR? Well, this plane just might be for you. As of the latest BR changes, I know we already covered the Crusader on my last video. This thing is now 8.3 with four 12G radar guided missiles. These are the Matra R511s. They are incredibly slow and very fun to use, to be honest with you. Now, even though they are slow, they do have quite a long burn time. You can see that thing was burning right there for probably at least 5 to 10 seconds on the way to that MiG-15. They are, since they are so slow, the 12Gs does go more than it would in like another thing you can see. It does pull relatively hard to lead him right here. The problem is because it does so, it can't pull back in in time to hit him before he goes right back the other direction. So, we'll be talking a little more about that later. But, you may be wondering, so... If this thing is so good, why did it go down in BR? Well, and that's because really the only like somewhat good thing about this plane is the missiles. As you can see, it is Levotor. It is a large twin engines tactical bomber originally. Uh, this one, of course, is an interceptor version, which means you get a pretty good radar. And these four radar got a missiles. You can also bring the AA-20 Nords. And to be honest with you, those are probably going to be more effective than these radar got a missiles a lot of the time. But... I find it really funny being able to beam people like this from four kilometers away with a radar got a missile at a BR where they don't expect it. Although you're probably going to eat a missile while you do so. Now, uh, these things are pretty easy to avoid. Like you saw that G91 doing an S turn last time. This IL-28 in front of me is also going to go ahead and avoid the missile as well. Um, all you got to do is a couple hard turns. You know, it also doesn't really like to track people that are going down like this right here. So you can see the IL-28 does manage to evade it, unfortunately. Um, pretty much the only planes that aren't going to be able to evade it if they are tr trying to are going to be stuff like the B-29 and TU-4. And even then, I only ran into one TU-4 making this video, and he actually ate the missile and the kill got stolen. Which is why I'm not including it in this video. I was a little upset. Now, besides the missiles, uh, the plane of course does get four defas. It's going to pack a nice heavy punch whenever you go ahead and use them. Unfortunately though, that doesn't mean you have to get your guns on target. And as you can see, the plane does not like to pull. The G indicator isn't even coming up. Now, this is actually a lot worse than the normal Votors. From what I understand, and this is just hearsay, it's basically as if only one of the horizontal stabilizers is actually giving you the lift you need. Because as you can see, it is an all-flying tail, which means in theory, this thing should be really good at avoiding compression at higher speeds, just like the F-Sabers. But it doesn't actually turn out to be. Luckily, you do get quite a bit of ammo, so you can just kind of spray like you did right there to manage to take out that MiG-15, and you're going to need to do that a lot, because you're going to get a lot of shots just like this right here, where you're fighting something like a Sabre, and you just you can't pull in time, because the thing is compressing so hard at these speeds that really not much you can do. I do recommend leaving the radar in this wider scan, just like this right here in most cases. Uh, personally, it makes it easier trying to get a lock on someone, that way I can kind of get a missile off when they're at a weird side aspect, kind of like this right here. I already had him locked, so I was able to go ahead and fire the missile. He does just evade it, unfortunately, but there is a case to be made for this working, especially because you're going to run into people that aren't expecting a radar got a missile at this BR. I mean, let, most people don't expect missiles most of the time at this BR, let alone a radar got at one. And this thing hardly ever gets played. Now, if you are in a dogfight, what you can do is just go ahead and kind of, to be honest, just boom and zoom, pretend you're an even heavier F-104, just go in and out of it. You do have really nice energy retention and pretty good acceleration, and especially when you're fighting stuff like ME-262s like I'm doing right here, you can use that to your advantage. Especially since he just has MK-108s, which probably can't even hit me even if he was like three, 400 meters behind me, which is a little sad to be honest. Now, remember what I was saying earlier about the compression on high speeds? Yeah, you definitely want to be careful with that. Even though it does technically help energy retention, I'm about to show you all here in a second just how bad it can be. You can see I am able to pull out right here, but just because I have plenty of altitude, I'm only going like 700 kilometers an hour or so. You're also not really going to be able to dodge shots. Now, here's an example of when I actually go for a shot on Gianni 1, and I have a kilometer or so of altitude. I think I have plenty of time to pull up. I even go on air brake, and I still slam into the ground. So you got to be careful with that. This thing is not like the other Votors if you've flown them. Do not expect it to fly like that. 
just keep that in mind. Hopefully they fix it. But in the meantime, it is a little frustrating in that regard. It would be a lot better if they did go ahead and fix that compression issue. Now, these missiles are Pulse missiles, not CW. I do plan to talk more about that in another video, probably a short coming up. But essentially, that does mean they're really good uh, at dealing with notching. He does just outrun the missile right here. Because it's slow, even though it does burn for quite a while, since he just turned away, it's not going to be able to get there in time. And then here's another prime example of it pulling hard, but him just unfortunately evading it. You can see that's actually, I'd say this pretty respectable turn for an 8.3 missile. He just simply manages to pull inside of it, unfortunately. So if you are fighting these, you probably aren't going to have to worry about it too much. So just, just, just go one way and back the other one. Now, if you do pull really hard in one direction, it does have a pretty good chance of hitting you. If you are using this plane, make sure to go in and out of the fight, just like I'm doing right here. I'm sitting here at top speed. That way they aren't really going to be able to touch me. And feel free to spray. You get 400 rounds of ammo, like I was saying earlier. You're going to need it, because if you miss the shot, or if your shot doesn't kill, you're probably going to have a hard time getting back around and hit. Just like this right here. I'm only going to crit this A4. And I have to go all the way back up and around again. I think I do manage to knock out his engine. So I probably would have been fine regardless, but this is just a good example of why I should have just held down the trigger in the first place. You're not in a very maneuverable aircraft. You're not going to be carrying... To be honest with you, I wouldn't worry too much about, you know, retaining your ammo. Now, this is in your typical matchmaker, which is going to be probably like either a 9.0 or a 9.3 game. Theoretically, since this thing is 8.3, you can get into 7.3 matches. I'm going to be totally honest with you. I played this thing for probably five or six hours straight, and I had one down tier. And that's what I'm about to show you right here. Now, when you are in these down tiers you're faster than pretty much everything else. It's actually kind of ridiculous. You're fighting stuff like P-80s, F-80s, Banshees like the one in front of me. I had an A-2D who squatted up with a 7.3 friend. And I am just much, much, much faster than anything else here. Now, in these down tiers, I think you're much more likely to get kills with the missiles on stuff like B-57s, you know, B-29s, since they are 7.3. Normally, I would have thought that would have hit the F2H2, but he decided to go up right whenever I was shooting a missile at him for the javelin. So he just accidentally evaded it. <laughs> These are those kinds of missiles. But the good news is, since I am so fast, that even though I'm sitting here on 3% throttle, I'm still going faster than him after I get out of this turn. And especially when I throttle up, I can just run away and both these planes are just not going to be able to keep up so they just turn and go and go back in the other direction because what are they going to do? Now, you are able to run down anything in a down tier. I think literally any of the 8.3s and 7.3s are going to be slower than you. And your firepower is very strong in the head-ons. So feel free to take it, especially against stuff with the American 20s now. You saw he actually hit me didn't actually do anything. Uh, <laughs> and then I can just run down the B-57. So this is definitely a very unique aircraft. I would recommend giving it a try, but I would not say it's meta by any means. So... Let me know what y'all think down in the comments below, if you managed to get any down tiers with it, and if you managed a missile on a Rado, for example. That's what I really wanted to do them making this video. Unfortunately, I never got the footage, so. But I hope y'all enjoy the video, and I'll see y'all next time. So, peace, y'all.